Hello everyone, I'm Tyler with Fish Tank Consulting and today we're going to be going over Sitecore Link versus Next.js Link. So, our agenda. We have three major topics that we're going to cover today. The difference between Next.js Link and Sitecore Link. So, coming out of this, you will not only know what the difference is, but hopefully be able to utilize the linking capabilities way more effectively. How to configure Next.js Link, so for both versions 12 and older and version 13 and newer. So you learn how to apply what you learn to both new projects and any projects still running an older version of Next.js. And finally, how Next.js preloading works. So this is one of the biggest benefits of the Next Link component. So it's important that we fully understand how this works. Coming out of this, you'll know. So the real question here is what is Next Link? Well, to put it simply, Next Link is a stock React component built by the Next.js team that builds upon the standard HTML anchor tag element to provide native prefetching for client-side navigation. So it very closely resembles the native anchor tag element, but provides some extra advantages such as customizable navigation via props, enhanced performance, and SEO benefits. Now comparing the Next Link tag to the normal anchor tag, you can see that we have some extra attributes on the Next Link tag. You'll notice that most of the elements remain the same, however, like both tags are using the href, class name, and onclick. However, in this example, we have two new attributes, prefetch and scroll. Now, Next.js Link has a lot of potential parameters that you can use. I have this massive table on screen right now, which is just overloading you with information, and this isn't even all of the attributes. These attributes are what make Next Link so powerful, and part of the reason that the Next Link component is so versatile. So we're gonna talk about some more of the powerful ones now. So prefetch, yes, this is one of the main points of this presentation. So what is it? Well, most of the next link benefits are from internal linking and is mainly used for preloading data. That said, next link also handles external links without any issues. Now prefetching is the attribute that determines how preloading works, uh, which we'll, we're gonna cover more of this later in the video, but I want to kind of start to trickle some of this information to you now to make it easier to understand later. Um, Page preloading happens when the next link component enters the user's viewport. So similar to how animations work, you can think intersection observer. Next.js will automatically prefetch the data from the internal link and then load the linked page. So this is done in the background with the goal of improving client side navigation performance. So as you can see in the example on screen, as an element enters the viewport, that value turns to true. So this is when Next.js would start to preload any link that's inside that div. Oh, and a good thing to note, prefetching is only enabled in production. It's not enabled by default in the development environment. The next attribute I want to talk about is replace. This works the same as the next router replace, except obviously it's specifically for link elements. And um, now obviously it defaults to false, but when it's set to true, next link will replace the current history state uh, instead of adding the new URL to the browser's history stack. This is great if you want to navigate the user to a new page, but don't want to change that history stack. So for example, imagine you have a multi-step form or wizard-like interface. As the user progresses through the steps, you want them to be able to navigate between steps, but you don't want each step to add a new entry to the browser's history. This way, if the user hits the back button, they won't go through each previous step, but instead will return directly to the page they were on before starting the form. Pass href is used mainly in the legacy next link component. It forces the link component to send the href property to its child. So in this example, we will pass the link into the anchor tag. Again, this is mainly used in the legacy next link component, which we will cover more very soon. Shallow is another great property. Uh, it's also available within the next router and something that I use all the time when developing complex forms. It allows you to update the path of the current page without rerunning get static props, get server side props, or get initial props. So this is particularly beneficial in cases where you want to change only part of the state or URL query parameters without refetching or re-rendering the entire page. The last attribute I'm gonna highlight is locale. As a developer in Canada, a bilingual country, we are constantly tasked with building websites that need to support both English and French on the user facing front end. The active locale is automatically prepended to the URL, making it easier to manage multilingual sites. However, with the locale attribute, you can override this by providing different locale if needed. If you set the locale to false, that default behavior is actually disabled, meaning you can include the locale manually in the href. 
This flexibility is crucial for ensuring that our websites cater to the linguistics needs of our users while also maintaining that precise control of the URL structure. All right, so we've talked a lot about Nextlink, but we more frequently use the Sitecore JSS link as Sitecore developers. So why did I just talk extensively about Nextlink and how is it different from the Sitecore JSS link? Well, the answer is pretty simple. The Sitecore JSS link is the same thing as the Next.js link. In fact, it's an expansion of the Next.js link. The main difference is that the JSS component checks if the link is internal or external and then renders using the Next.js link component or will render a normal anchor tag. It also has some great built-in functionality for the Sitecore edit mode with like experience editor. The JSS Next link SDK component in normal mode, so that's what the user interacts with on the front end, uh, returns a next link component. This allows you to control prefetching and all those other attributes that we were just talking about directly on that next link component. Then inside edit mode, so inside our experience editor or Sitecore pages, it's going to return the React SDK link component. Now the React SDK link component inside edit mode returns an editable span or with or without a anchor tag inside. So this does not have that prefetch functionality that the next SDK link component does. So in like a mini conclusion here about the edit mode, this prevents prefetching from causing any weird performance issues inside experience editor or pages when using SSR. Now, for those exact reasons, you should always prioritize the use of the Sitecore JSS link. There are some niche scenarios where the traditional Next.js link could be more useful, but you should always attempt to use the JSS link when possible. So, how do you configure the Next.js link? Well, it's actually super easy. In Next.js version 12 and under, so these are your older versions, uh, your version of Next link will be different. Uh, what you're using is currently labeled as the legacy link. The main difference you'll notice as a developer is that the legacy link requires an anchor tag to be nested inside the link tag. Then you can apply all the properties like on click, class name directly to the anchor tag itself. Using pass href is one of the attributes that we talked about earlier is also a requirement for legacy link. Now, while it will function without the property, href wouldn't be passed directly down to the anchor tag if you didn't use it. So, the browser and any bots crawling the site would only see it as a JavaScript route change. And depending on the bot, it might not even detect it as a link at all. You can also enable this exact functionality by using the legacy behavior attribute in Next.js 13 and above. Now, talking about Next.js 13 and above, we have the modern Next.js link. Now, there was nothing more fun than spending hours going through my project, upgrading my Next.js 12 links to my Next.js 13 links. Um, but this is the current link used by Next.js and Sitecore JSS. And the main difference between the two is the removal of that nested anchor tag and the requirement to use pass href. Uh, this is no longer needed. Now you can just put all the attributes you want directly onto the link tag itself. Okay, what is preloading? Now we all know what standard preloading is, where we try to preload and prioritize scripts or hero images when the user starts to load onto our web page. But what specifically is next link preloading? Well, next link preloading or prefetching is one of the reasons Next.js feels so fast for the user. The idea is for Next.js to immediately preload all the internal links that are within the user's viewport. So this picture shows how your standard MVC or PHP website will load. Once the user decides to navigate to a page and then clicks on that link, that's when the browser will start to load the data. Now with prefetching, we will proactively prefetch all the resources for the page that are within the user's viewport. So if you think back to that intersection observer example I showed earlier, as soon as a new potential link scrolls into view, Next.js will automatically send that data to the user's computer, resulting in extremely fast navigation between pages. Now that sounds great. Extremely fast navigation is exactly what we want between pages, but this can also slow down the initial page load when the user first lands on the page and subsequently affect any dynamically imported components or lazy loaded images that you have on the page. Because the browser is so busy trying to load all of these above the fold links, 
a user with a slow computer or a slow internet connection is going to struggle. So now you might be thinking, okay, how do I disable the preloading? Well, the short answer is you can't disable the preloading. But if you've been paying attention, you probably noticed that I've shown the next link prefetch attribute quite a few times with the value set to false. Now, like I said, this doesn't actually disable prefetching, but it does do something so much better than disabling. It allows you to toggle between two modes. The default mode, which we've already talked about, is when prefetch, the next link will prefetch when the link enters the user's viewport. So as the user scrolls, the links will automatically load. And then the disabled mode, which I love, which is prefetching only when the user hovers over the link. So you're still getting some of that preloading power, but without any of the impact of preloading when a link enters the viewport. Now, if you want to avoid preloading altogether, you'd need to use a native anchor tag, so not the Next.js or JSS link components. Although this would only be relevant in very, very niche use cases and is not recommended. The plain anchor tag will do a full page refresh and reload the entire Next.js React app. Now, the next link component with prefetch false is just gonna do an XHR request to load the target page's JSON file and then update the DOM using React's shadow DOM. So it's just gonna be significantly faster than using a basic anchor tag. So when do I enable preloading? How do I choose between loading when the link enters the user's viewport versus when the user hovers over the link? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. Generally, we only want to use the viewport preloading for those high traffic links and then any large real estate links. So for example, if a page has high traffic items in the navbar, so think above 25% click-through rate, if the hero banner has some links in it or call to action, maybe there's a massive featured article on the page, that would also be valid. Now, some of you might be thinking, is it really that feasible that a user will be overloaded with links above the fold that will impact performance? And it's actually a lot more common than you think. This is techopedia.com, a popular technology news website that posts your standard tech articles. Uh, now, this is a top tech website that garners a lot of traffic. Now, as beautiful as this homepage looks, you can already tell that there are a lot of links presented to the user immediately. In fact, the above the fold on this website's homepage has a total of 41 links. We have 11 links in the navbar. Of those 11 links, four of them are link dropdowns, which contain even more links that I'm not counting at all. We have a sub nav directly below the main nav, and inside this secondary nav, we have nine individual links. We have seven articles immediately presented to the user and each article obviously leads to its own article page. And then inside each article block, we have 14 sublinks. So each article links to the author's bio page and the topic page. Trying to preload this page with all these links will cause performance problems. So obviously we want to optimize this for the user to prevent their browser from immediately loading 41 different links. We want to preload on hover almost all the links on this page. There are only a few potential candidates for actually preloading in the viewport. So you want to preload the links that take up a large real estate, like that massive featured article and any URLs with a large click-through rate. So like I said before, 25% and above. So I've done some amazing Microsoft Paint work here to highlight what some good changes would be. I've highlighted every link that could benefit from disabling viewport preloading in both green and yellow. I've used two colors just because there's so many links, it was just hard to differentiate from a random green blob on page. Now, I've also drawn some extremely elegant red boxes around three links on the page. I'm assuming that at least one of these two navigation links, so that's artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency at the top of the page there, have a high click-through rate, so above 25%. And I'm recommending that they preload them for the user. However, it's very realistic that the only item on this page that will benefit from preloading the viewport is the item uh, directly in the center there, the big massive featured article. You should preload in viewport sparingly as it's gonna put more load on both technically your server's bandwidth, but more importantly, the user's computer. It's more efficient to default to preloading on hover for most of your links. Now, before we end, I'd like to cover kind of when to avoid using or some benefits of not using the next JSS link. But I'm gonna reiterate this again, just to make sure it's clear. You should always try to prioritize using the site called JSS link when possible. 
So you should use the native Next.js link when you don't have that link field data that's coming from Sitecore. A good example of this is linking to social media sites. The example I'm using here is a share to Twitter button. So I'm not getting a link from Sitecore that I can pass down directly into that JSS link. So I'm going to use the Next.js link and then dynamically, dynamically create a shareable link using existing variables already inside my component. Sometimes you'll have two links on the page, one that needs the Sitecore JSS link field and another that's just a URL. Because both Next, because both Next link and Sitecore JSS link have the same component name, you can't naturally import them both at the same time. However, you can simply use the alias import to import the default Next.js link component under a different name, allowing you to use both components at the same time. Thank you for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed uh, this video and learned something about Next.js and Sitecore JSS. Hopefully you come out this with a better understanding of how Next.js handles linking and preloading and will allow you to build better Sitecore websites.